This is Game Night with Josh Hennig on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. Now, live from the Matt Black Kia Studios. Oh, what a oh, whoa, what a move. Here's Josh Hennig. Game night here on 97.3 ESPN. It's a football start of the week. Thursday night football, Brady versus Foles. I'm all in. I'm more for this. Give me some of that. Super Bowl MVPs going head to head. Hey, listen, last Thursday night turned out to be a, a really fun game, despite the fact it was Broncos versus Jets. And this game, I can promise you, will be a good game. You can hear it right here on 97.3 ESPN. Little Eagles news dropped over on the website at 97.3 ESPN.com. Latest Eagles injury report. Just give you a little summary and get more of the details on the website. A couple guys back at practice. It's good to see Lane Johnson and Rodney McLeod. They're limited, but they didn't play. They didn't practice at all yesterday. So that's a big deal for the Eagles going against a Steelers team that is going to present a lot of challenges. So you're going to need Lane Johnson and Rodney McLeod out there. You need Rodney out there to deal with the multitude of weapons that the Steelers are going to bring to the table on offense. And let's be realistic. An 80% Lane Johnson is still a pretty good Lane Johnson, right? They go up against the Steelers defensive front that is arguably, statistically, the second best defensive line in the NFL, right behind the Philadelphia Eagles. You get the full list of details on the Eagles injury report right now at 97.3ESPN.com. Coming up tonight on Game Night, we'll talk as we do each and every Thursday with Andy McNamara of Sportsnet. We'll get into the fantasy football situations. We'll get into what's going on around the NFL. This Titan situation, are they going to play the game? Are they not going to play the game? You know, it was interesting because last week when Andy and I talked, we started talking about the Patriots and the Chiefs. Then Saturday came along and they had to, you know, all the news came out, right? Well, now, we on Thursday, we all know what's going on with Sunday. So, it feels like right now, this Titan situation just not going away. So, how do you deal with it? What do you do? We'll get into all that and more coming up with Andy McNamara. Here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. That's coming up in about uh, roughly... 13 minutes from now. PlaySugarHouse.com. Text board is open. 609-403-0973 to get on the conversation. 609-403-0973 on the PlaySugarHouse.com text board. And I was thinking throughout the day as I'm watching the NFL build and build toward this game tonight. This massive showdown between two former Super Bowl MVPs. And when I go back and think about again and again that Eagles Super Bowl run, I hate to be a negative person, but let's be realistic. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Whether we want to admit it out loud or not is a different situation. But the truth is, if the Eagles and the Patriots would have played 100 times, the Eagles are not winning every one of those matchups. If there was a 10-game series between the Patriots and the Eagles, the Patriots probably win that series at least 6 out of 10 times. And I'm not hating on Nick Foles. I'm not trying to diss the Eagles or anything like that. But that was one of the final years of peak Patriots. Right? That was one of the final years of that whole collection of Brady and Gronk and Edelman and all of those guys playing at the high level. Because the next year, when the Patriots won the Super Bowl, they won it because of their defense, and Brady had a couple clutch throws late in the game. Their defense destroyed and demoralized the Rams' offense in that Super Bowl. So you were playing a Patriots team that scored more points on the Eagles than anybody else had that year. They just were nuts. And you had to go blow for blow with them 
in that Super Bowl. And that's one of the things that makes that Super Bowl iconic is that the back and forth, the fact that the Eagles had to go blow for blow. That's what made Nick Foles so special because he wasn't really the reason that got you to the championship game. Think about it. In previous weeks, the Eagles' defense had allowed 17 total points in that run. Yeah, allowed 33 to the Patriots. I mean, that's basically double. You allowed basically double in the Super Bowl than what you did to the Falcons and the Vikings. Think about that whole stretch of the season. Think about how many games with the Eagles defense really stepped up, and they did a lot that season. But when they needed Dick Foles and Doug Peterson to come through big, they found a way. And that's part of the nostalgia. Well, Nick Foles is no longer on the Eagles. That Bears defense is a little suspect at times. Tom Brady's on the Bucks with, I'm not even fully sure who's playing receiver. I mean, Mike Evans may or may not play. Chris Godwin is out. O.J. Howard is done for the year. Got, uh, got some problems there for the Bucks. A lot of guys are not available. The fact that I'm I'm listening to ESPN's Bucks reporter Jenna Lane talk about on Sports Center this week that they were hoping that Scotty Miller would be available. Yikes! That tells you everything you need to know, right? They were hoping Scotty Miller might be available. Oh man! I mean, when you're hoping Scotty Miller is going to help save you, you got you got some injury issues. All right. Not that the Eagles are any better, but I'm just saying the Bucks, the Bucks situation is uh is pretty tenuous right now. All the hope is being leaned on Scotty Miller. Goodness gracious. But that's what you're dealing with tonight. And it's gonna be a fun game. It's gonna be interesting, but I'm just warning you, it's not gonna be a Super Bowl. Because there's just not that many players healthy on the field right now. Even with the Eagles injuries in 2017, they still had some good weapons on the field. They still had Ertz and Jeffrey and all those guys on the field for Foles to throw to. Right now, he's got a washed-up Jimmy Graham. He's got Allen Robinson, who's really good. Running back situation is a little thin over there in Chicago. Remember, Tariq Cohen's injured. Not the same. I'm still going to enjoy the game. I'm still going to be watching it, but I'm just warning you as I warned myself. This is not a Super Bowl rematch. This is going to be two guys in completely different situations than that Super Bowl. And that's okay. It's still going to be a lot of fun. Again, Thursday football coming up tonight. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. here on 97.3 ESPN. PlaySugarHouse.com. Text board is open 609-403-0973. Speaking of the Eagles, as I mentioned earlier, with Lane Johnson and Rodney McLeod back at practice, I still have very little faith in this team to beat the Steelers, but at least you can be competitive. And for the Philadelphia Eagles, they want to show that they can at least hang with certain teams. Ike Taylor, two-time Super Bowl champion, was on the Sports Bash with Mike Gill and Hunter Brody earlier today on 97.3 ESPN. And he had some very interesting things to say about the Eagles, about Carson Wentz. And one of them stood out to me was this point that Ike Taylor, the former cornerback, had to say about Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz. When Carson come back down and understand he don't have to make every play, him just being Carson, making it, making the reads and the throws he needs to make, everything will be fine. But I think right now he's just pressing the issues. When he's does what he, you know, he doesn't try to do, he's pressing, right? When he just does what he can do, when he makes the reads. What Ike's basically telling you is that Carson Wentz is a good quarterback. But when Carson Wentz plays his style, his brand of football, they can win. But if he's out there trying to do too many things and being too fancy and trying to play hero ball, It's like what we've been saying. That's when Wentz has problems. 
What does Ike Taylor like about Carson Wentz? One thing I do like about Carson is he's going to lay everything on the line, his body, his heart, and his soul on the line for the sake of his team and his teammates, and you got to appreciate that. Listen, we've all been very critical about Wentz over the last few weeks. I'm up there with everybody else. But Ike Taylor's right. One of the great positives about Carson Wentz is that he did, does lay out his heart and soul for his teammates. And he's out there trying. He may not always make the right decisions. He may not be always be the perfect guy or the perfect candidate or get it all right. But his heart is in the right place. And he's out there busting his tail for his teammates. And for a guy who played as long as he did in the NFL, to be looking in and let the Eagles, as they prepare for the play of the Steelers, this Sunday and say, I like the fact that this guy puts his heart on the line and he cares as much as he does about winning. I can at least work with that. I'm not promising you Carson Wentz is going to be a, a Super Bowl MVP or a league MVP anytime soon, but at least there's a little more positive than negative there with Wentz, and that's a big reason why he's still the starting quarterback here in Philadelphia. If you missed the conversation with Mike Gill and Hunter Brody with Ike, Taylor, the two-time Super Bowl champion. You can catch it on our YouTube channel. Just type in 973 ESPN in the YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Josh Ennick here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. Game Night being brought to you by GMS Law. Make the right call with four giving locations to serve you. Visit them online at gmslaw.com. 609-403-0973 for theplaysugarhouse.com. Text board up next. We'll talk more football. NFL, fantasy football, all in one package with Andy McNamara of Sportsnet here on 97.3 ESPN FM and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. You're listening to Game Night with Josh Hennig on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. It's Josh Hennig here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN as he does each and every Thursday here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. Andy McNamara joins us on the Boardwalk Kind of Hotline. NFL, week five is where we're at. Also, fantasy football, a lot of questions, a lot of pickups, a lot of drops. What do you do? Andy's here to answer all those questions and more as is each and every week. Make sure you follow him on Twitter as well. If you're not already following him on Twitter, you should be following him on Twitter. You can catch him at AndyMC81. My friend, how you doing today? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? We got got some football. Uh, it's uh, if anybody can take the field for the Buccaneers, anyway. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> let's let's start with tonight's game a little bit because I, I was saying in the first segment that you know it, this is not a rematch of the Super Bowl as much as that's the headline. Let's be realistic. Nick Foles doesn't have that kind of weapons in this game, and Tom Brady doesn't have those kind of weapons in this game. So. In terms of football, in terms of fantasy, what can we really expect from the Bucks and the Bears? Boy, it is the only way. I like overall, if we're looking at Week Five, your season-long league, I would say try to avoid most players in this game. Now, if you're going to play your DraftKings Showdown contest, different story. And I, I do have some plays for that, but overall, man, it's it's not very good because like look at all the injuries, like. Josh, we were talking before we came on, like when, when people are saying, hey, is Scotty Miller playing? Problem. you got a problem on your hands there. Uh, here's a sneaky play, two of them on the Bucks that I'm really digging tonight. I don't hear anybody talking about Cameron Brait, man. Remember, this dude was scoring touchdowns the last two years. Then Gronk came in, you know, and, and kind of took away some snaps. And O.J. Howard, O.J. Howard's gone. Gronk is going to play, but... He wasn't 100% at all. He's got a shoulder thing. Are they going to limit his snap count? I think Bray is a nice little play tonight who could kind of sneak in. And also, when you look at the rookie, Kayshawn Vaughn with Leonard Fournette doubtful. Now, track it. If, if Fournette does play, then you're into that three-headed monster and you want to avoid him. But if Vaughn plays, this dude is impressive, and I don't think he's getting enough pull as far as uh, what he can do potentially in this game. So track those guys. When you think about also tracking people, I know for a lot of people, they have questions and, and they're, they're genuinely curious about 
what to do with Tom Brady in fantasy football. Mm. You know, and it's not just because people are starting him or benching him, but because Tom Brady historically, let's be realistic, his fantasy value has been dependent on the weapons around him. Yep. He's not running, right? Like, that's the thing with Tom Brady. Like, he's, he's not going to run for you. Now, this year so far, outside of that week two dud against Carolina, these are the best Tom Brady fantasy numbers we've seen in a few years, right? Like, last week, he put up almost 37 fantasy points, almost 24 the week before that. You had the, the 10.68 stinker in week two and then 22.46 in week one. So when you look at what he has had around, I like that you said that, Josh, because now it's like, all right, he's had those weapons, but what is he going to have tonight? What is he going to go to tonight? And could this really be a leaning on the run type of situation? Now, and to me, again, if I'm looking at the two, am I going to take Tom Brady or Nick Foles in, in like DraftKings showdown tonight? I'm taking Tom Brady, right? Like Nick Foles, uh, outside of, of that first little game when teams have had time to prep for him, and done too well. So I'll take Brady in that matchup. Quick back note, too. I just I just put uh, pulled up the DraftKings lineup here. Keisha Vaughn is one thousand dollars, Josh. He's a thousand. Get him in your lineup, okay? If that dude play, if Leonard Fournette doesn't play, that guy's gonna win you some money tonight if he doesn't play. But outside of that, like he's got to he's got to be chucking it around to somewhere. I just feel this could be one of those sort of grind it out, slow, low scoring type of games. So I think you're right tonight with like. Tom Brady with the weapons around him. You got Mike Evans and boy, there's, there's not that much else. That's, that's really a hundred percent ready to go. Well, if you ask Eagle fans, Mike Evans probably be the best player on the team. And you know, as far as they're concerned because of all the injuries they've had, but that's neither here nor there. Um, another question about this game today I have is, you know, I know that for a lot of people, they've been using some of these defenses throughout the year for their fantasy leagues. You mm. know, the, the bucks, and the Bears were two teams I think some people thought could maybe be valuable plays throughout the year. Do you stick with them tonight, or do you bench those defenses and maybe try to go with somebody else on Sunday? I would say if you got to pick in the two, i go with Tampa Bay, just because I don't trust Nick Foles. Now, I love Foles in Philly. If, if, if put, get Foles back in Philly, you know, we'll talk, right? But when he's not with the Eagles, we've seen it hasn't gone too well, whether it's his fault or not. I would stick with the Tampa Bay defense tonight just because when you look at the Bears, they only had more than four fantasy points for their DST or, or defense, depending on how you play, this season. Just over four points once, and that was against the Giants. Well, Tampa Bay's this just in. They're better than the Giants, right? And when you look at the Bucks, they had a zero in that first game with New Orleans, then 14, 18, and six in an offense that isn't too high flying overall. Um, I would say Tampa Bay with that team. If you want to go outside of it, uh, uh, I'm I'm one of those in, in one of my leagues where I like to stream defenses. Uh, so I had Indianapolis the last couple of weeks. I'm not having them against the Browns. So I picked up Kansas City that was available on a bunch of uh, a bunch of teams, uh, or sorry, a bunch of um, waiver wires there against Las Vegas. You know, because Kansas City's defense again, one of those those defenses that. Um, has has surprised on how good they can be fantasy wise from time to time. So, if you want to go away from this matchup totally, I get it. If you got to pick one, go with Tampa Bay. Andy McNamara joining us here on Game Night on ninety seven three ESPN. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Andy MC eighty one for all of your fantasy as well as NFL insights. Let's hit the weekend because the big topic this week, this Titans fiasco seems to just not go away. It feels like the Marlins and the Cardinals with Major League Baseball about a month and change yeah. ago all over again. You know, I was kind of hoping that maybe the NFL would learn from baseball's mistakes, but like, I guess not. And it's become a hot topic around the league with a lot of people who are angry about it. One of those people are people who want to look at Tennessee, whether it's fantasy football, whether it's sports betting, or just for entertainment purposes. What mm -hmm. do you do with this Tennessee situation? Do you just bail on the team? Do you do you sit there and just say, I'm, I'm going to stay away from them? What should people do if they have people like Derrick Henry? Yeah. Oh, well, you spent a high pick on Derrick Henry. Probably A.J. Brown. Now, he was banged up anyway, but Tannehill's been hitting it. John U. Smith at tight end. We know how thin the tight end group is in fantasy football. And it's not just that, Josh, either. It's how it affects the teams they play. I don't get Josh Allen this week, man. 
pretty pissed off. <laughs> right? Like if if you're if you're a Josh Allen owner, John Brown, Stefan Diggs, Singletary, you don't get those guys because of the Titans. You don't get the Titans players. You don't you didn't get you had to go and scramble on a surprise bye week with the Pittsburgh Steelers last week. You didn't get Juju, you didn't get Big Ben, you didn't get Connor. You didn't get Deontay Johnson. Like it is it's not just them, it's who they play as well and how long this is going to take. And then if you think about Buffalo, the Buffalo example, well, all right, they're supposed to have a Thursday night game next week. And then now they're saying, okay, well, maybe if they can get some game, maybe they'll move it to Saturday. Well, that gets all jumbled around. How does that affect betting fantasy and, and all that, right? Like it's a, it's a total mess. I think a message has to be sent from the league. And I was leaning towards like the, the forfeit angle of like, just teach them a lesson. But apparently the Buffalo bills or any team wouldn't get, the players wouldn't get paid if the game is forfeited. So maybe the league can fix that or something, but you gotta, you gotta send a strong message to this team. It says you guys are the only ones who are having mass breakouts. There's the odd case here and there, but mass breakouts. It's you. Why is that? Let's find out why. And then punish them severely to send a message. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because, and I know it's not an apples to apples comparison, but I just thought of this, you know, in MMA, which is, which is one of the sports that I'm very passionate about. Anybody's listening mm-hmm. to me here on 97.3 ESPN. What happens when somebody misses weight, they give 30% of the fight purse to the other oh. fighter, no matter what, you know? So yeah. maybe is there something where they go to the Titans and say, you better clean up or we're taking money out of your salary and we're giving it to the Steelers and the bills. Oh, I love it. I love it. That'd be amazing. Now, how would that work in the uh, collective bargaining agreement? I have no you? idea, Ooh. but I like the idea, yeah. okay? <laughs> I like it. Josh, I like it, man. I like. You know what? Something to smack them in the mouth yes. and say, listen, unacceptable. I, and listen, when we're hearing things they were practicing in high school, I don't know. I don't particularly care. I know that they're risking ruining football. Nobody wants that. So they have to be sent a message. And I don't think draft picks, per se, is necessarily enough. I say you take away draft picks. I say you forfeit a, a, a win and, you know, figure out the financials for the other teams later and, and just send that message there and say, oh, oh, you don't like that? Well, oh, well, then be smarter like everybody else. Speaking of smarter, let's talk about another question mark this weekend. It's such a question mark that the Vegas sports books have taken this game off the board. Mm. Ravens and Browns. Lamar Jackson, he mispracticed today. Now, it was a stomach ache today, but yesterday it was his knee. Mm-hmm. It's made everybody in the sports books nervous. Only a handful of sports books are still taking bets. And I know for fantasy, a lot of people probably overpicked when it came to the Lamar, picking maybe really high, like a second round, maybe in some yeah. cases. So, what, what do you do? I mean, do you, do you sit there and maybe, <laughs> I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this. Do you grab and stash RG3 as a just in case oh. if you're in a fantasy league or, you know, if you're, if you're someone looking at this game, do you, do you maybe try to, you know, shove Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews to the side and be like, eh, if Lamar's not available. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. And what did I, I came on your program in the, in the off season. And I was pleading with people, pleading with them, Josh. I said, don't, over draft Lamar Jackson. Don't do it. You Don't said it multiple it. You can times. You get Dak Prescott. Multiple, multiple. On my shows, on social media, on your show. I, uh, Don't do it. And the answer is, well, why? Andy is the MVP. Okay. Since Drew Brees in 2013, there was only one time that a fantasy quarterback who finished first finished in the top two the next year. And we're seeing that trend for Lamar Jackson. Numbers are down. Just checking. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. He's a QB eight right now. He was out of the QB twelve conversation a couple weeks ago. He's had two games in the teens. Now a knee. Now a mystery stomach issue. Guy risks his body too much. Guy gets banged up. And so when you look at it against the Bengals, now the Bengals defense stinks. It is bad. So you have RG three. Like here's the thing. And that offense outside of Lamar, you have to downgrade everybody across the board anyway because. You can't count on the running backs. John Harbaugh, true to his word, in the appreci- he told us, and if you listen to him, you wouldn't have drafted any uh, Ravens running backs high. He said he's going to use three to four every game. Look, look at the stats. Look at the boxers. He's done it. 
You can't rely on the wide receivers. Lamar doesn't throw an accurate ball enough, especially wide or long to the outside. Mark Andrews, boy, he can pop, but he's never had a double-digit target game in his career, and he can go from having a 20-point game to a five-point fantasy point game. Drives you nuts. So even on the best days, they're a bit of a gamble from a fantasy perspective, but if Lamar doesn't play, boy, like, I think you gotta you, you got to pretty much wipe them out as far as options for your fantasy team. Start making some preparations now. A couple other games I want to hit on with you here over the weekend, of course. We know that one team, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but one team has been very, very productive for a lot of people. And I know I shouldn't be too surprised, but I know I am, and I'm not going to lie about it. You just mentioned them, the Bengals. <laughs> I mean, T. Higgins yeah. is turning into a viable flex option each and every week, and Tyler Boyd is still putting up points, and Joe Burrow, I mean, he's doing well. You know, how, do, do we keep riding the Bengals when it comes to fantasy? Overall, this season, yes. Baltimore defense makes me nervous, okay? And, and the reason is they are so stout and so tough. Now you have Joe Mixon. Let's start in the backfield there. Um, he was added to the, the injury report Thursday. Uh, a shin issue. I don't know what that means, but we'll have to, to see what, what a shin issue is for Joe Mixon. But you're right, T. Higgins. And that's, that's the thing. These college guys, these young quarterbacks, you never know who they're going to be drawn to because it's, they're new. They don't have to be with a – this isn't Andy Dalton. He doesn't know A.J. Green. He, he doesn't have to care about A.J. Green or, or Tyler Boyd. Um, so yeah, T Higgins is certainly a riser and you have Boyd who I'd put right up there with him and you fade on AJ green. I would say again, now that we're in, we're in bye week time. We got the two teams on the bye uh, this week, which makes, you know, this is starting where we got the lines, the Packers, probably Titans and bills. So now we're talking four teams on the bye. So your options are going to be dwindling here. Um, so I would, I would say you're probably going to have to roll with those guys. If if you got them and you don't have a better choice, but if you do like for, for DraftKings, if you're doing DFS, I would try to fade on the Bengals versus that Baltimore defense this week. Another interesting game on the slate for Sunday for a lot of people is that giants Cowboys game. Uh, it's been described as the very movable object versus the <laughs> force that can't be do anything with. So, uh, <laughs> So what what do you do here in a game like this? You know, like for example, you know, I know our one of our hosts on the station, Hunter Birdie, he's got Darius Slayton, right? But he's got Daniel Jones throwing to him. And on the other side, you know, you have a, a Giants team that they don't really score a lot of points. Cowboys can't stop anybody. What are you doing here? And and that's uh, I love that. It's sort of the reverse Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant, right? The irresistible force versus the immovable object. It's a very <laughs> resistible force. <laughs> Everything can be removed, can be moved, <laughs> and very resistible. You're right. So here's the thing: Cowboys D can't stop anybody, but they'll give you four to five hundred plus yards of offense. Look at that Browns game last week, right? Forty nine points by my Browns. Um, so when you look at Dallas, you light up everybody. You got a Dallas Cowboy, you get him in there. Pretty much, if you're naming me a Dallas Cowboy, I'm going to say get him in your lineup from kicker all the way up to quarterback and everything in between. Now for the Giants, because of that like defense is this going to be the type of game where that offense scores in bunches that means that the giants are going to be forced to play catch up that's what we would assume the running game super uninspiring so i think you're going to want to be focusing on evan ingram that's sort of the lost guy he's gotten a lot of targets lately now they haven't amassed too much because the giants have been so bad but that is the guy that daniel jones is going to be looking towards Okay, so I think you go him. I think you go Slayton. If you got to pick one of the running backs, you go Freeman. But, you know, if, if you don't have to, don't. And then you sort of try to steer away from that. But I, I'm picking Ingram to have a big breakout game and, and turn some heads against that Dallas defense that can't stop much. Let's hit on one more game from the weekend. I got to go to Monday night here with you because Justin Herbert named the starting quarterback mm. moving forward. Tyrod Taylor a doctor lost him a starting job potentially. So, Boy. but that's all another story for another day. Herbert, though, a lot of people have been wondering: Do I do I invest in this guy? Do I start him? 
you know, in these year-long leagues, you know, some people have disappointing quarterbacks or quarterback injuries or whatever it may be. You know, maybe you have a guy with a, a wonky bye week because of all this Titan stuff, mm-hmm. right? You know, yeah. so is Justin Herbert a viable fantasy quarterback from here on out? So here's what we got to look at. Let's look at the next slate of games for the Chargers. You got the Saints. You can put up points on the Saints. You have the Jets. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. You got Miami. You have Jacksonville. You have Vegas. These are all high volume fantasy games for a quarterback who's not afraid to sling it, run around a little bit. Now, he's thrown an interception in each of his three games, but it's only been one. You haven't had one of those real bad, like, you know, two, three, four interception, Jameis Winston style games from Justin Herbert. So he's learning. Um, I think you do. And especially if you have him as your sort of bench extra. Now, his stock is going up. He's been at, I'm just looking now, in Yahoo leagues, over 26% addition to rosters over the last 24 hours. So he's up to 42%. So if you were thinking about pulling the trigger on getting Justin Herbert, do it now. Put him up. Maybe get rid of one of those extra wide receivers that you're not using and and keep him and have him set because he doesn't go on the bye until week 10. Andy McNamara joins us each week here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. Make sure you're following him on Twitter at AndyMC81 for all your fantasy sports as well as NFL news and notes. Andy, before I let you go, any last you know thoughts or perspectives or pickups or anything you want to you know make sure that people know about before heading into NFL Week 5 weekend? I'd say this. Tight end-wise, like I said, Cameron Bray, get him for tonight. Not long-term, but you get him for tonight. And... You know I don't like the brag, Josh, but uh, who told you? Who told you all about Robert Tanyan for for the Green Bay Packers before it was cool, huh? This guy, you can still get him. He's on the buy. People are going to forget about him. Get this man on your roster today. Go get him right now. And also one other play for Sunday: don't sleep on the Ernest Johnson of the Cleveland Browns. Okay, he's been Scott. He was owning one percent on Tuesday when my waiver wire article was released on Sportsnet.c. So Tuesday, one percent ownership. Now he's up to forty-four percent rostered. Get him in while Nick Chubb is out. He's going to eat, and he is a shifty back as a change of pace for Kareem Hunt. We have a, a listener who got this in just under the wire, so I'll pitch this to you real quick. He has to pick one. John D. texted in, says Devonta Freeman or Antonio Gibson. Ooh boy, you know what? New quarterback, new energy. Give me Antonio Gibson in Washington. There you go. John D., you got your question in. Under the wire, right in time. Andy McNamara, make sure to follow him on Twitter. Catch him on Sportsnet. And as all guests, he appeared today on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Andy, always appreciate the time. Good stuff, Josh. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the games, everybody. Josh Hennick here on Game Night on 97.3 ESPN. As all guests, Andy McNamara appeared on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. We'll get to more of your texts on the other side at 609-403-0973 for the PlaySugarHouse.com text board here on 97.3 ESPN FM and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app powered by First Bank of Seattle City. Now, more game night with Josh Hennig on 97.3 ESPN and the free mobile app. PlaySugarHouse.com text board is open, 609-403-0973. Game night being brought to you by Matt Black Kia. Matt Black Kia wants to get you approved today. That's Matt Black Kia on the Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township. Little NFL news dropping in as we uh, we talk with Andy McNamara before we hit the break. The Broncos have been informed that their game against the New England Patriots will be moved from Sunday to Monday night. It'll be the early Monday night game. This is a story that has been confirmed by Albert Breer of the MMQB. So, looks like the Patriots, despite the fact they don't have a COVID outbreak, their COVID situation is still going to impact this weekend. So... Maybe they're hoping they get Cam Newton back in time for a Monday game. Now, according to reports, this was a recommendation by the NFL's doctor, head doctor, Dr. Alan Sills. So it seems like the Patriots situation 
maybe kind of spooked some people. Now, Schefter just dropped this report just about a minute or so ago. He says, while there are no new positive tests after Thursday morning's testing, the Patriots are taking additional precautions and will continue to prepare with virtual meetings and no practice again on Friday per team official. So it seems like this is more of a precautionary move than a reactionary move. It's very interesting. Very interesting to see how the NFL is handling all this COVID stuff. And let's be realistic. Nobody nobody really cares what the plan was because now we are just managing it as we move on the next day. So, again, the Patriots-Broncos game is going to be moved to Monday Night Football. Another Monday Night Football doubleheader this week. According to multiple reports, the idea is that even though there's no positive test for the Patriots, Today, no new positives. They are moving with an abundance of caution just in case. Remember, Stephon Gilmore was the new Patriot to test positive this week. Now, it should be noted, I was listening to different people who cover the NFL. They brought up that, remember, if you may have heard, there were two planes that were to and from the game. The Patriots the Patriots were separating their players a little bit. So, for example, the guys who were around Cam Newton were on one plane. The guys who were not around Cam Newton were on another plane. So, they were kind of already implementing their own set of precautions moving forward. So, again, Patriots-Broncos, Monday night. Keep that in the back of your mind as you prepare for NFL Sunday. So, there's a possibility there will be two, not just one, but two NFL games not happening on Sunday. Remember, we've talked about with Andy McNamara, you probably heard it earlier in the day, the NFL is considering moving the Bills-Titans game to Monday or Tuesday. Well, if they're moving the Broncos-Patriots to Monday, then Titans and Bills probably have to play either Sunday or Tuesday. I think that's a fair assessment as of right now. And honestly, as I know I was saying a little bit in jest earlier, but I'm a little bit serious. If I'm the NFL, I got to tell the Titans to figure out their situation because they've already fined the Raiders for having an event where people were not following these protocols that they set in place. Now, the Raiders don't have a breakout of positive tests, but the Titans do. And there's a lot of conjecture that the spread of the COVID-19 and the positive tests, which nobody else has all these positives. Think about this. There have been 40, uh, sorry, 4,200 tests across the NFL among coaches, players, and staff on all the teams. The Titans have accounted now for over 90% of the positive tests of the 4,200 people who have been tested each week. That's ridiculous, to say the least. Okay? That is just a ridiculous number. And the NFL has to figure something out, right? Something has to be figured out. And I, I know I was being a little kidding and saying that they should give away their money for the players, the other players. But there has to be something. They have to draw a line somewhere because it's just not fair to everybody involved. It's completely unfair to the other players and other teams that just sit around and twiddle their fingers and wait around. We saw this happen with baseball with the Marlins and the Cardinals. They disrupted the entire season for other teams. And frankly, I'm glad the Marlins got swept out of the playoffs by the Braves because it's an embarrassment they made the postseason. And the fact that it's an embarrassment, they completely disrupted everybody else's season because they had to go out and have a good time. Okay? You had a 60-game season. You couldn't keep yourselves out of trouble, out of having a lavish social life or whatever you were doing specifically over a 60-game season. I just, I just have no patience for people who don't have the professional courtesy for everybody else around them, putting everybody else's professional lives in jeopardy. 
this is not a COVID issue specifically. This is a respecting everybody else around you issue. You have players on the Bills and on the Steelers, on other teams that are literally having their seasons in jeopardy. Guys who know they only have X number of seasons to play football, make life-changing money, put their lives and their futures and their families in a better place to maximize their careers, to maximize this short period of time for them to play a professional sport. And you're jeopardizing them because you all got to go out and have unsanctioned practices outside the facility. Because people aren't being responsible and following these protocols. Listen, the protocols stink, okay? Do you think any of us want to be out wearing masks like we are? No, of course we don't. But the fact that everybody else is able to follow the protocols and nobody else has 20-plus people testing positive. Now, almost every team has had somebody test positive. One guy here, one guy there, two guys here, two guys there. Nobody else has 20-plus people. It's just the Titans. They got to do something. And I don't know if my answer is the right answer, but they got to do something. Game night here on 97.3 ESPN. Josh, I think hanging out with you. Game night being brought to you by AutoZone. When you need battery help, you need to visit AutoZone. AutoZone is America's number one battery destination with free testing, free charging, and Duralast batteries. Get in the zone with AutoZone. Reminder coming up tonight on 97.3 ESPN. Brady versus Falls, Bucks versus Bears. You hear all the acts start at 8 o'clock tonight on 97.3 ESPN. And then tomorrow night on 97.3 ESPN, St. Joe versus Pleasantville. High school football action. Mike Gill, C. Parker on the call. Speaking of the Titans game, news just jumped. Here we go. Adam Schefter. Blue check mark. Titans-Bills game. Scheduled for Sunday is being moved to Tuesday at 6 p.m. as long as there's no more positive tests in Tennessee. The domino effect is the Bills-Chiefs game is being switched from Thursday to Sunday but goes back if there are more positive tests in Tennessee. So just to reiterate that, Adam Schefter is boring. The Titans-Bills game is being moved to Tuesday at 6 p.m. as long as there's no more positive tests. If the Titans-Bills game is played on Tuesday... Chiefs-Bills is being moved from Thursday Night Football to Sunday. If there are more positive tests for the Titans, then the Bills-Chiefs game next Thursday night stays on Thursday Night Football. What a chaotic mess. What a chaotic mess. I'm Josh Ennick. This is Game Night. Catch you tomorrow.